like I love the work that I do. You know, it's not a ego thing, but I do feel once the piece is done, I let go of it very easily. I think walking into the show can feel very reminiscent of a bed with a lot of pillows. You know, there's a lot of pain, there's a lot of noise outside, and you're in bed. Or for me, it's, I'm underground. It's dark, it's quiet, and there's six feet of dirt on top of me, and it feels wonderful on my body. I'm not avoiding these things, but there's a sense of coziness and safety with the background noise of pain in the world. The title of this one is A Pack of Wolves and a Boy in a Red Shirt. It's the most narrative piece to me in this show. It's the most reminiscent of folklore. I think that it can allow the viewer to examine a state of innocence within themselves. I think it can allow the viewer to examine the wolves in themselves. You know, are the wolves benevolent? Are they malicious? And the viewer can come up with their own answers as to what the narrative is. In the process of making the work, I am 100% like emotionally connected to it. It's where I need to be with it while I'm painting it. But as soon as it grows up and it can live on its own, I feel comfortable with sending it off into the world and having it live its own life. You know, I think part of being an artist is drawing on your own experience. Um, I'm not trying to cater to one audience in particular, but my own experience may speak to an audience, like a certain type of people, more than it speaks to another type of people. You know, a lot of my rage is centered around my own experience. The title of this piece is Tu in the Sempasuchil. Uh, Sempasuchil is uh, marigolds, you know, it has significant meaning like in Mexican culture. It's the flower that we put on the altar for Dia de los Muertos, which helps our ancestors visit us. Um, and for me, this piece feels like a love story. You know, there's two figures kind of rolling behind the flowers and it's a very peaceful piece to me. It's an ancestral piece and it's a Mexican piece to me. I think the idea of identity art is damaging to a lot of like, it's a very one dimensional view of BIPOC artists. Um, I think like the white gallery spaces, the white viewers want us to really go hard on the stories of being BIPOC. They want us to go hard on the struggle of not being a white person in the world. They want us to go hard on the resistance and how our existence is resistance. And I think it's a very one-dimensional view of people. Um, I think in the end of the day, it's more damaging you know, like we need to be seeing brown people cry. Like we can't just be seeing brown people holding up their fist and protesting because that is an image that is played out. I mean, like we are, we do do that, but it's also something that is very one dimensional, a very one dimensional view of us. With this piece in particular, I don't want to give away too many answers. It's about rest in a lot of ways. Um, I feel like if I were to give answers as to how I see it, it would change the narrative of, how, of the possibilities of how other people might see it. And I don't want to control the narrative that other people have when viewing the work. I always try to think of things just like in the most simple forms, like. The existence itself is enough. No meaning to it, no story. It exists, leave it at that. I think for me, what excites me about this piece is there was a lot of unexpected things that happened. Um, there's no nails, no screws. It's, it's all joined together with glue. 
But one of the exciting things that happened for me was I notched out the wood to sit inside of here. But as I was about to put the leg part onto the foot, this space formed. And this negative space was really exciting to me. Um, it created a whole new type of foot in, in some sense. It seemed more sculptural. It seemed more like of an abstract idea of a foot that was resonating with me. It seemed more like bones in a way. And it's, a, it's a play with negative space and I'm happy with how it turned out. New ideas forming conceptually. I'm thinking a lot about a very, very old violence that is just like natural for humans. You know, it's a very natural thing, unfortunately. I do think we can rise above those things. There was a time when I thought humans will just destroy themselves, but I do think now I'm actually more optimistic that we can overcome these things. And I've learned a lot from it. And so I hope other people can learn some things about themselves from it. I feel like if I don't examine my own life, and don't understand my own emotions, then I'm just adrift. I'm floating. I'm confused. And art and the act of painting helps me put the puzzle pieces together to understand my emotions and understand why I react to certain things. Um, and like how I handle things like in the future and how I can move forward.